like to see Roy, but uh, Roy, it's great. You're here. Uh, I'm here I'm too. Here. I see you on the other side of the screen. Wonderful. Uh, well, it's such a joy tonight to be a part of this gathering of nations, uh, people uh, who know that my house shall be called a house of prayer. That's what we are tonight. And people who know that we are to make disciples of all nations. And Roy, you and Daphne, being in the business world, heart, strong heart for the gospel, led to a little place, a retreat center, uh, saw God moving in awesome ways, remarkable ways. And a book, Grace Outpouring, another book, The Way of Blessing, uh, founding houses of prayer uh, in many places around the world. And now in a new season, and tonight is part of that in a sense, a tipping point. And so I just, Roy, want to hand over to you, but I bless you, Roy, tonight in Jesus' name. With a word for us tonight that will be multiplied across the nations and be and bring clarity to the simplicity of God's love, the way He has chosen us and designed us to be a blessing and to see that blessing flood the nations for a huge harvest in this season. So we bless you and we thank you in the non anxious presence of Jesus, Father that you will guide us tonight and speak as we listen and open our hearts to your truth in Jesus' name. So over to you, Roy. That's a bit of a blessing and prayer, but I hand it over to you. <laughs> thank you. Well, it's good to yeah. see you, Mike and uh, Jordan. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me to come and spend this time with you. And uh, hello, everybody else. Really good. I can't see you all, but I know you're there. So... Uh, I want to go straight into things without much of an introduction because we haven't got a lot of time. And uh, so, so here we go. And this is where I want to start. How can you live the best life that you can possibly live? Okay, how can you live the best life that you can possibly live? And the answer I think is quite straightforward and simple. The answer is that you discover what God is doing and what God's purpose is, and then you align your life with that. So that as God moves through history and through history that you're capturing in your lifetime, you are swept along in the toe of it, except that in God's blessing, he draws you in and he gives you a place in his purpose. And so you may be doing, well, a million things, but the centre, the steering of your life needs to be aligned with the purpose of God. So what is the purpose of God? Well, that's easy to answer. What's the, what's the purpose of God for, for your life and for where you live or where you work or where you study? Well, if we're Christians, we're supposed to know the answer to that. It's simple. It's in the scriptures. Be still, God says. Stop all your activity. Be still. And know that I am God. That's the starting point. And then he states his purpose. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. Well, that's simple and straightforward. Then. It's all about God being exalted in the nations. That's his purpose. This is how it's fleshed out by Isaiah. This is the heart of God, that the earth will be filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That's God's purpose for your life and for where you live, that the glory of God may be revealed and fill your life, flood and overflow your life, but also the community where you live, where you work, 
where you have community yourself, uh, whether that's online or whether it's rooted in uh, a physical presence. The plan, the purpose, the heart of God is that the knowledge, uh, well, I say the knowledge because the minor prophets then come along and take Isaiah's words and add that word in. The, the knowledge of the glory of God may cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And that's amazing. It's pointing towards Jesus because when Jesus came, he brought in human form, small enough for us to see and comprehend. He brought a comprehensive, uh, a, a knowledge, an ability for us to comprehend the glory of God. We see it there in Jesus. So God's plan and purpose is that the knowledge of God in the person of Jesus may flood all things, that therefore all things may yield before him, all things may bow down before him, that he may be preeminent in everything that there, excuse me, that there is. That's the purpose of God. It's, it's simple, it's straightforward. And every one of us should really have been clear about that as part of our ABC of what does it mean to become a follower of Jesus. But lots of very basic things and kingdom principles uh, get lost from generation to generation. And there are other emphases. And then the, the pendulum swings back. And we remember the very basic things that we've forgotten, often because we've been trying to be too clever and too sophisticated. I want to just stay with the simplicity of things. God's purpose is that Jesus himself may be exalted in the earth, but the knowledge of him may cover everything. In other words, nothing left untouched. And there's a warning of that, of course. Uh, the warning is that, that we can yield and, and gladly bend before him and bring our lives to him and ask him to fill us with the knowledge of his glory or if we're obstinate uh, we will be led into judgment because we were offered the way forward into life we were shown the price that was paid for us and we said no thank you that just brings judgment on itself um, God doesn't have to do anything about it, really. We're just putting it down on our own heads. So this is the good news. Let's talk about the word gospel for a moment. Uh, when I was young, if you heard the word gospel, you thought you were reading the gospels or you were in church because gospel was to do with, uh, with, with church things. <clears throat> but then in more recent years, um, gospel has become a word that can be used for all manner of things. And we speak colloquially of, of course, that's the gospel truth. And it's quite interesting that people will use that phrase and say something and say, and that's gospel truth. And uh, therefore, they expect you to believe it, but they don't believe the gospel. Anyway, the word that we translate as gospel or good news it's a Greek word uh, from the New Testament, euangelion. And if we speak English, we've probably just got used to the phrase of, uh, of gospel or good news. And so we speak it or we read it and washes over us. We miss its significance. In New Testament times, that word that we call gospel was used very rarely. But when it was used, it had incredible significance. It was to do with government. And when somebody heard the word gospel, they would hear it from a herald sent from the royal palace, the place of final authority and rule. Uh, People would be sent out as heralds to every community across the nation. They would go into the square and they would shout out, Evangelion, good news, gospel. And the moment people heard it, 
they would know exactly what was going on because this was to do with kingship. And it could only mean one of two things. Either a new king is ruling or a new king has been anointed. That is, a baby has been born and there is a new king now waiting to take up his kingship as he grows. When Jesus harnessed that word, when he went out into the communities proclaiming good news, O Engelion, when he sent the 12 and then the 72 out into communities, going before him, calling out, O Engelion, here's the gospel, the good news. The hearers didn't hear it like you and I do. The hearers heard, this is news about a king. This is about government. This is about rule. And this is wrapped up in the purpose of God. And we need to recapture it. This is about authority, an ultimate authority. There is a king, we know his name, it's Jesus. He has been anointed as king. He is seated today at the right hand of the majesty on high. When he returns, he will return in glory as the king over all and is only delaying, we're told in the New Testament, not because he's slow, but because he wants to let as many people as possible have the opportunity to hear and understand the offer of salvation. This is all capturing what the purpose of God is, where we are. If we align our lives with his purpose, there are a number of things we need to do. We need to testify to truth by the way that we live, by our integrity. And that means being honest when we fall flat on our face, when we mess it up, and knowing that although we shouldn't sin, when we do, there is an advocate for us, Jesus Christ. And he is able, as we confess our sins, to forgive us and to cleanse us again and to give us a new start. How many new starts? As many as we need. He's committed to getting us over the finishing line. Every time we say sorry and he cleanses us and forgives us, that forgiveness is not going into a bank account with our name on it that he can refer to. So the next time he says, how much have you already spent? It's gone. God being God can't even recall it. When we say, Father, I need forgiving again, he says to us, what do you mean again? Let's just deal with who you are and where you are now, that, that I can deal with you and cleanse you and forgive you as you tell me how sorry you are and turn from where you were. This is an amazing kingdom we're part of. We need to testify, not by hiding, but by, by being honest. That enables us to relate to others. We testify to truth by our heart of worship. So that when we worship, we worship in spirit and in truth, not only with the music of our voices, but we bring our lives and in our worship, we lay our lives down before him again as a living sacrifice. It's not about us, it's about him. Then we are testifying with power to our trust in him. Now, there are some other things that we all know I'm not going to touch on them all. I want to touch on two. First of all, our intercession. I cannot tell you how many people have come up to me when I've spoken wherever in the world I'm speaking, where I've spoken about prayer. And they've come up to me afterwards and say, well, we pray, you know. And I said, well, that's good. You should if you're a Christian. Oh, yes, we pray. Well, well, what do you pray? Oh, and I hear this again and again. Several hours a day. Okay, why are you telling me that? 
Uh, is that supposed to be a sort of badge of honor or something? Uh, I'm speaking to you guys truthfully and honestly, okay? Openly. Um, why would you, so what do you pray? Oh, we pray for this and we pray for that. And we, I say, okay. Um, do you focus on the coming of God's kingdom? Uh, no, we, we, we've got all sorts of things going on. I say, okay, well, this is my issue. Jesus said, when you pray, this is how you shall pray. And then he tells us how we should pray. And we start off by coming to the Father. Father in heaven. You know what happens when we do that? When we say, Father in heaven, we are saying, and here am I on earth. But you are in heaven, Father, my Father, and our Father. I am part of a movement. It is our Father, not my Father, as we come to pray. I am one of the family of God. I am part of the family of God. And uh, I witness that when I come to the Father. No, no Lone Ranger saints here. Uh, we're part of this together. We are in the people of God. Father, hallowed be your name. That is, Father, come and glorify your name. That's what Isaiah and Habakkuk are saying. Come and glorify your name. Let the knowledge of your glory come. We're aligning ourselves with heaven's intention. We're coming into agreement with heaven. And that's where our lives need to be, in agreement with heaven. Let your glory come. Father, all your character, everything you are, open it up. Open it up for people to display, not just your people, but unbelievers. Let them see your glory. Give them eyes to see that they may turn and believe and trust in you. Come and be God. Father, your kingdom come. That is more than intercession. That is invocation. I am calling the kingdom down. I am calling it down. Invocation. I am invoking it. I'm not going to let go. I'm doing what Jesus said I should do. Your kingdom come. Where? Not just where, but there's more. And your will be done as your rule, your kingly rule comes. Where? On earth. That's the heart of our praying. From beginning to end, that framework of prayer is about invoking the kingdom. And the kingdom and the values of the kingdom pour out of it in every sentence and every phrase. But the heart of it is here. We are standing in agreement with heaven on earth. What bit of earth? Your bit of earth, where you are. Your responsibility is to come before the Father because of Jesus and call down the kingdom, the breaking in of the knowledge of the glory of God where you are. That bit of earth, where I am, this bit of earth. Now, this is warfare. This is scriptural warfare. When we say, your will be done. This is not a passive, oh, well, Father, your will be done. Whatever happens, I, I just trust it's your will. That's what, not what Jesus is saying for a moment. He's saying, Father, let your kingdom break in now on earth and come with such power that every demonic and satanic power is broken down. Every uh, wicked agenda is destroyed so that your will is done, not the will of wickedness and destruction and death, but your will for forgiveness and life and freedom and liberty. Prisoners set free, the sick healed, the lost finding hope because of Jesus. This is how we are taught to pray. By our praying for the kingdom to come, 
we are walking in our life's purpose. Our praying, our invoking, our calling for God's kingdom to come where we are on our bit of earth is the most powerful and effective thing we can do in our life. But we need to couple that with something else. Our invocation of the kingdom is what we do with the, excuse me, with the Father. We need to do something else. We need then to put the name of Jesus on our community, on people's lives, on their circumstances, on the framework of the agenda. We need to write the earth is the Lord's. That includes every person here. It includes our community, our locality, our region. How do we do that? We do it by speaking blessing. Now then, there is a lot of misunderstanding about the principle of blessing. Let me understand. Uh, sorry, let me explain. If, if I'm talking to you and you haven't got a Bible and you long for a Bible, I can say, I'd like to bless you with a Bible and I can give you what I have. I have a Bible, that's what you want. But there may be other things that you want. You may need peace. I can't give you peace. You may need joy. I long for some joy in my life. I cannot give you joy. You might be hungry, as Sir James writes in his letter. If I say to you when you're hungry, be blessed, be fed. It hasn't done you much good. You remain hungry. What you need is food. What you need is joy. What you need is peace. I cannot bless you with any of those things. But I can bless you in the name of Jesus that he may release food for you, that he may fill you with peace, that he may come and flood you with joy. That's how blessing works. I bless that he may bless. But to say, I bless you with healing in the name of Jesus. I bless you with, uh, uh, with food in the name of Jesus when I have no food to give you. I, I bless you with joy is meaningless, nice sounding words. It's unreal. That is not the scriptural pattern. The scriptural pattern is to say, I bless you that he may bless you. If you were to look at Psalm 20, you would find words like this. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings. May he grant your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Do you see the first two words all the way through? May he. When you look in the scriptures and see those words about God, may he, almost always that's a blessing. And it's a form of blessing you may want to pick up and use for other people. When it comes to um, blessing a place, then we have a, a simple pattern there as well. And um, let me just find it if I can for you. Here we are. And you'll find it in the last verse of Psalm 129. And there is a pattern. Now think about being aligned and agreed with heaven. And the pattern is this. that we can speak over a community and say, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You could say that over your, your state. 
Um, if you're in Wales, we could say it over Wales. We could say it over our region of Wales. I, I would say uh, West Wales, uh, the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. You may say it over your locality. Speak the name, the Lord bless you. But then we go further. There's the pattern that we find. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Now that's interesting and it's important. The Lord bless you. And I bless you in the name of the Lord. Now we, we have the name of the Lord, Jesus. So we can say the Lord bless you. And I or we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we're speaking over that community because the promise of God is when we bless people, he will come and bless them. And if you want to, to really be clear on that, you can look at the very last verse of Numbers 26. Okay. I think my time is just about gone already, hasn't it, Mike? Uh, keep going for a bit, yeah. Yeah, thank okay. you. Now, this flow of getting our lives aligned, of, of doing the first part, which is invoking the kingdom, calling the rule of God now, the knowledge of God to break into your community. What does that mean? You're calling out that God's rule comes to devastate the strongholds in the lives and the structure of the community where you are. It means people will be set free. It means people will start getting dreams and visions of Jesus um, and, and discover him. Let me tell you quickly, I shared this stuff with, with, with just a few people in, uh, on an island, actually, and uh, they decided to put it into practice. And they, they started to meet in one of the front rooms and begin to do that. They did two things. They cried out for the community where they were that the rule of God would come and the knowledge of God would break out. People would be set free. And they worshipped God and they spoke blessings in the name of Jesus over their community. First thing that happened was that uh, a neighbour came along and said, I've, I've heard you worshipping. Don't you want somewhere away from your home? I've, I've got an empty shop you could use. Um, would you like to use it to meet it? And they said, well, thank you very much. But what would the rent be? No, I'll just give it you. Ah, great. And it was in the, in the very place where prostitutes would gather for trade and drug dealers would come. And uh, he said, I'll give it you. So they... They went along and they greased the window so nobody could see in, so they could clean it, it'd be empty for some time, and they could begin to decorate. Um, but they would stop and they would bless the community and ask God's kingdom to come. And there was a knock at the door. And I went to the door and a young woman they'd never seen before stood there um, and said, um, I, I, I understand that you can tell me how to find this man who loves me so much. And they looked at her and said, do you know his name? And, well, I think it might be Jesus. I don't know who Jesus is. So they invited her in. And over three nights, I think it was, she's had the same dream as she slept of a man who appeared before her and simply looked at her with a, a clean and a pure love the depth of which she'd never seen in her life. And when she woke up the third time, she said, how do I find you? And he said, you walk down that road, you turn right, you turn left, you carry on, and then you'll see a window when you won't be able to see through it, and you knock on the door and they will introduce you. That wasn't bad, was it? A little bit later, the same thing happened again. These people who, were, who didn't know about Jesus, were, were finding him in their dreams as they said, Lord, your kingdom come. Well, in the next uh, little community, this is a rural uh, island, uh, in the next little community, they had been going, I think, singing and proclaiming blessings for something like four days when the Holy Spirit fell on a class. And uh, as a result of that, uh, every child 
were swept off their feet and found themselves worshipping the Lord. Some of them prophesying, some of them worshipping with new languages uh, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Um, this was a few years ago, as, uh, as I understand it. They are still going and following Jesus. There is power when we do the simple things that Jesus says we should do. And this coupling of blessing. I agree with God's purpose for you, we are saying, to our community and to lives. I will pray for you that God's kingdom will come, that the power of the age to come will break out now. Because God is impatient, he cannot wait to rescue people and to display the glory of his son. Father, your will be done in my community. Your will be done in these families. And while I call you to do that, I agree and I say community or marriage, relationship, whatever it may be, I agree with the purpose of God. And here on earth, I bless you in the name of Jesus. And that's the interlocking and agreement of heaven and earth. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Mike, let me just hand over to you. Thanks so much, Roy. A huge encouragement. And I just want to encourage people to, you've probably taken notes, go into scripture, look afresh at the Lord's Prayer. Perhaps go to Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Uh, God said, I'll bless you. You will be a blessing all nations will be blessed through you and then take to heart just this such important truth that Roy has brought to us also recommend if you haven't read the books read the book grace outpouring and also read the book the way of blessing and Roy maybe just tell us briefly about the blessing course um yeah uh, this, this is the uh, participants manual for the blessing course. Um, let me recommend it to you if you are uh, interested in understanding a little bit more about blessing, about God's desire to bless you, and far more from the scriptures about how you bless people and how you bless communities and nations and so on. This is a seven part video based course. So roughly seven videos, about 20 minutes long, and there is a participant's guide, and there's quite a bit to look at in there. Uh, not too much. Um, it'll take you maybe 20 minutes a session to do it. And um, I believe you'll find a blessing when you've done it. Now, I'm recommending this really not because I've done it, but because we don't know uh, of anything comparable at the moment um, that you could do as an alternative. What I can tell you is this, it has rocketed round the world. And uh, day by day, wonderful testimonies are coming in. People are becoming Christians who, who are, have not been believers. Uh, sometimes they've been in other religions, but uh, two or three or four Christians have invited them to sit in on this. And they have discovered Jesus, the Father's love, at the beginning and turned around and uh, given their lives to Jesus. But there are now teams of people around the world in so many language groups that are going out on the streets. This business of agreement, if you can get one person in agreement with you, whether you're walking in a city street or in a park or uh, or whether you're just wanting to speak over a, a community, if you can get at least one person in agreement with you, that's really strengthening your, your power of agreement and your ministry of agreement. We bless you, not just I. We bless you. We are in agreement together. We bless you, community, in the name of Jesus. We bless you, people playing or picnicking or whatever it may be. We bless you. We call the blessing of God down on you, and we bless you in the name of Jesus. That's incredibly mm. powerful. Thank you. Uh, thank and you. you. So, my, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just going to say you, you can find out much more about that if you go on to my website, uh, roygodwin.org. Mm. 
and then just look for the for the blessings course there. And I've just right. put the links into the chat box for those who are interested to the course and also to the Grace Tapering book. So as we transition into response in worship, um, by the way, uh, uh, in the next 24 hours, here's an encouragement for you. Pray that God will give you a friend, call your friend, make an appointment, go together with agreement and bless somebody in the location that you live in. Very simple step. Uh, if you don't know what to do, just ask God, show me how to bless in this situation, show us how to bless and trust him and he will. I'm going to just pray into the Lord's prayer and I've, I wrote down words. I have a habit of writing words at this beginning of the same letter, which I caught as Roy was sharing. Father, we just abide. We are still. We abide in the life of your son. We are awakened tonight that we together are your sons and daughters, that living temple, that body. We seek to align with your agenda and submit to your authority in agreement to walk heaven on earth. And even though we're clay vessels and we've had messy lights, your grace fills us with the cleansing power of your Holy Spirit. Hallowed be your name, our Father. And we pray that we will know that authority. We, 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 I bless each person here with the authority of Christ's presence, just an awakening of that, an alignment with your agenda, Father. And then ability to walk in availability to what you're going to do. So we simply ask, activate a fresh release of this way of blessing in each of our lives. And give us confidence, Father, to step into it in Jesus' name. We thank you that Jesus is in us. And the power of the Holy Spirit is speaking tonight. Declutter our minds from everything that is contrary to your agenda stop us from looking into darkness and teach us to walk in the light and to sleep to defeat that darkness and that evil in the name of jesus amen amen, amen. thanks jordan thank you thank you, Roy. Thank you mike we appreciate that we're very blessed by what the simple and profound revelations you shared Roy. and thank you for sowing into people today I might just hand over to Charlotte now. Thank you so much, Jordan. Um, Roy, that is such a blessing. I have read the grace outpouring several times, mostly cried through it, cried all through the pages. I, I started it one night and I think I read until three o'clock in the morning because I couldn't put it down. Um, it made me fast multiple times pray all through my house, all around my neighborhood and all through the city. I've given it away to multiple people and I've been so blessed by what you've imparted. Um, thank you for writing it down. So I look forward to diving into the, the way of blessing as well. But it's um, made a massive impact on my life. Brothers and sisters, let's, um, let's just spend some time on the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come quickly. Your will be done the same on earth as it is in heaven. Let heaven come to earth as it is in heaven. Let
is our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come quickly, your will be done the same on earth as it is in heaven let heaven come to earth as it is in heaven let heaven come and yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever amen yours is the king you are right now would you just begin to bless out loud would you begin to bless your homes would you bless your city would you bless your church would you bless your family if you need healing would you bless your body right now in the name of Jesus let's just lift up his name his he is king of the king of all that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord lift it lift him up right now lift him up
So.